What is going on, Bomber fans? Today was a monumental day in the history of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Years gone by, we were always told, well, you can't sign this guy or you can't sign that guy. He doesn't come from Winnipeg. He comes from Ontario or nobody wants to play in an old stadium or nobody wants to play with a losing franchise or they don't want to play for the current head coach in Winnipeg. But today, there were no excuses, no reasons, because the Winnipeg Blue Bombers delivered big time in free agency. First, I'm going to recap the players the Bombers signed. They signed offensive lineman Jeff Keeping, kicker Justin Medlock, running back Pascal Lochard, running back Andrew Harris, receiver Ryan Smith, defensive lineman Euclid Cummings, and Keith Sholigan. Let's start with Jeff Keeping. Jeff Keeping is an experienced CFL offensive lineman. He's a Canadian. He went to college at Western Ontario. He's six foot six and 295 pounds. He will serve as primarily a backup and a backup plan to Matthias Gossen at center and also a backup and a backup plan to Patty Newfeld at guard. The Bombers desperately needed to bring in some more depth on the offensive line because before today, they had their five starters signed and nothing in behind them. They've achieved that. I would expect Winnipeg to add another offensive lineman, if not two, in the draft. But that's just for depth and future purposes. I think they're done upgrading the meat of the offensive line for this season. At place kicker, the Bombers signed Justin Medlock. And he's not just a place kicker, he's actually a pretty good punter too. But the main reason they signed him is because he is, bar none, the best place kicker in the CFL. Over the four seasons that he has uh, been an everyday kicker in the CFL, not including the one season when he tried for the NFL, didn't make it and come back, the most amount of kicks he has missed is six. We had a kicker last year, Hira Lahu, who if he was given the opportunity, he would have missed six field goals in one game, let alone six in the whole season. And it's not just the stats. The stats don't tell you everything. The stats just tell you this guy hits approximately 90% of his field goals on a regular basis. But what the stats don't tell you is that he's also got the strongest leg of any place kicker in the CFL. So he's able to attempt field goals that other kickers would only dream of. Yeah, like this is just nothing but a slam dunk, massive upgrade, taking Winnipeg from probably the worst kicking game in the CFL to the best kicking game in the CFL. And I don't care what anybody else says about it. That's just what happened. The Bombers also upgraded their receiving core by signing Ryan Smith. Ryan Smith played two years in Saskatchewan and he's basically a clone receiver of Weston Dressler. He's five foot seven. He's from North Dakota State and also born in North Dakota. And last year he had a massive breakout season for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. He had 991 yards catching, seven touchdowns. That's all on 59 receptions. And I think he is going to be a very productive player for us. Moving on to the defensive line. Last season, we had Jamal Westerman on the rush end, who is a Canadian player, who is also the best, well, maybe two or three best rush ends in the CFL. But after him, we had nothing. Okay, Brian Turner had a bad year. Anderson had a bad year. And Greg Peach, uh, I don't even want to talk about Greg Peach right now. But we were able to sign is Keith Sholigan, who is one of the most sought-after free agents in free agency. He is another non-import player, so he's a ratio breaker, gives the Bombers more flexibility, but on top of that, he's actually a very effective player. He had seven sacks last season and 26 tackles, and you can bet that he will be one of the starters on the interior defensive line of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. We also signed from the Toronto Argonauts an import defensive lineman, Euclid Cummings. Cummings is a monster. He's six foot three. 281 pounds. He comes from Georgia Tech and last season he was able to, in 15 starts, produce eight sacks as a nose tackle. 
that's pretty good. Extrapolate that over 18 games, and you're probably looking at 9 or 10 sacks from the interior defensive line position, where you don't generally put up massive sack numbers like a Russian like Jamal Westerman does. And last, but certainly not least, Winnipeg needed to upgrade their running game this year, and they did that in a big, big way. Pascal Lichard was signed. He was with BC last year and served as the backup running back to Andrew Harris. He's uh, another non-import, and the whole reason that we signed this guy is because we also signed Andrew Harris. You can't start a Canadian player at a position without having a quality Canadian backup, and so this gives us a flexibility to go into any given game and know that we are going to be starting a Canadian at running back. And if something happens with Harris, Lochard can come in and we don't need a mess with our offensive line or the receiving core should that happen. And then the final signing that I want to talk about today is Andrew Harris. Andrew Harris is a terrific player. Uh, Some people say he lost this little bit of a step. Uh, What I saw is a player that was not happy where he was last season. and He was still, despite that, very productive, rushing for 1,039 yards and seven touchdowns. So I think that the Bombers have definitely upgraded. And once again, this guy's another ratio breaker. So we don't know how they're going to use these two new non-import players. I mean, we know how they're going to use them. They're going to start these guys. But now that we have potentially three additional Canadian starters, more than the league requires, we're able to... Uh, have the flexibility to start the guys we want. So, you know, right now, I think that we're going to start four American receivers instead of the three that we started last season. And we also open up the opportunity to look at the corner position where we have a Canadian starter there right now. And we have a middle linebacker last year, Samuel Hurl, who was also a Canadian starter and maybe one of those guys isn't a starter this year. They can maybe battle it out in camp. So that brings me to the next point here, which is uh, I want to talk about the Bombers moving forward. They spent a lot of money today. I don't think they're completely done, but I think they're mainly done signing impact players, and I think that they're probably going to be out there looking for some bargains to maybe replace some players who uh, have bloated contracts and looking for depth guys. But I also think that they're going to be trying to trade off some pieces here because for all the new starters coming in, that leaves a pre-existing starter who probably gets paid at least decent money and the Bombers are bringing in upgrades at those positions and they're probably not going to be able to afford to keep all of the starters from last year in those positions and the new guys. So some of the players that you might see leaving would be Brian Turner, Anderson, on the defensive line. You also, I I think that uh, Sam Hurl or Matt Buckner, one or two of those guys might end up not being around because they simply can't afford them anymore. And possibly Clarence Denmark. I would love to see them not release Denmark and go with a starting receiving core of Weston Dressler, Ryan Smith, Darvin Adams, Clarence Denmark, and Rory Kohler. But it remains to be seen what they can all fit into the salary cap. So, yeah, let me know. Like, I think this is an amazing day. I, I don't think I've ever experienced a day like this for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. I mean, it, it feels like they just went through an expansion draft, the amount of quality players they picked up all in one day. I I can't recall a time. Let me know in the comments below uh, whether you agree with my optimism here or whether I'm just overly excited right now. And like this video and subscribe.